A streaming server for slightly over a grand that does up to 8 streams manufactured by a loudspeaker company that throws in a lifetime Rune subscription. Has the world turned mad? Elac is a 90 year old German company that now has fresh blood streaming through the veins in the form of no management and two key persons from TAD Pioneer. The internationally acclaimed loudspeaker designer Andrew Jones and Vice President of Product Development Chris Walker. They introduced the Discovery Server Streamer with the promise that the Discovery sub-brand will bring many more network products. A Wi-Fi amplifier that has a line input and a network input, a range of active speakers with Wi-Fi inputs and a table speaker. And that's just what has been announced. The DSS-11G, as it is called, is a small and elegant heavy aluminum box that on the front only shows a light to indicate it's powered on. The rear is far more crowded. Let's go from the right to the left this time. First we see two stereo line outputs on RCA. These normally offer separate signals with separate volume controls and thus separate DA converters. The third output is on Toslink and yellow RCA digital output. They both feed the same volume control third output. All three outputs can also individually or together be fixed to maximum output and can be coupled to feed the same signal. Further left is a USB 2 input for connecting an external storage device like a hard disk or a thumb drive. Music cannot be stored internally, there is a small solid state drive for the operating system and Rune's database. There also is a 1 GB network connection, a reset button and a 12 volt DC input to connect the supplied wallward power supply. The Discovery runs on Linux as many servers and network players do. On top of that runs Rune Essentials, a light version of Rune. This is music player software in a class of its own. I have seen it called a music magazine, but that doesn't do it justice. It is like the experience of playing vinyl albums, reading the album covers and having a music magazine alongside. It is a completely new way to discover your music collection. See the top right corner for a review of the full Rune version. The light version here has some limitations. The most noticeable is that the number of tracks is limited to 15,000, which equals to around 1200 to 1500 albums. That's more than most people will have, save the real music lover. Yet it is considerably less than popular brands like Sonos and Blue, uh, Blue Sound do. There are more, less significant features missing from Rune Essentials, like the lacking support for DSD and the missing graphic representation of the signal path. But those are of far less importance. Apart from that, the user interface has been made more logical, functions are brought together in one menu instead of all kinds of buttons all over the screen. So here Rune Essentials is even better, although I expect these changes to appear in the full version as well. The Rune Essentials software has Tidal fully integrated, so if you look for David Bowie you see the old albums from your own collection, but also his latest album Black Star from Tidal. You could even have Rune Essentials add Tidal albums in one or more genres to the album oversight, but again with the restriction of a total maximum of 15,000 tracks. It is therefore wise to first have your own music collection loaded before you log in to Tidal for the first time. Tidal easily fills the 15,000 track capacity and you need that for your own music. If you exceed the 15,000 tracks, you can still access the Tidal music by going to the artist and then scroll down to find the albums of that artist that Tidal offers. 
The Discovery is a streaming server and player at the same time but has no internal music storage. The essence is that you don't need a computer. The Discovery is the computer and the streamer. Music can be stored on a directly attached hard disk or on a NAS or share on the computer elsewhere in the house. The Discovery needs to be connected to the home network over a network cable since it can provide up to 8 streams and when they are stored on a NAS they have to come from the NAS to the Discovery to be sent from there to the endpoint. This means 2 times 8 streams, thus 16 streams. When they are 24 bit 192 kHz each stream will be 9.2 megabits and that adds up to almost 150 megabits per second. That's ok on a gigabit network but even on current speedy Wi-Fi networks it will be hard to guarantee 16 uninterrupted continuous streams all the time. Therefore no Wi-Fi was integrated forcing you to use the sensible thing, a wire. As we have seen it has one digital and two analog outputs that can be sent to the stereo in the living, a mini set in the kitchen and so on. As soon as the other Discovery products become available they can connect to the Discovery server over Wi-Fi since each output only uses one stream. Apart from the Discovery products AirPlay and Room Ready endpoints are supported according to the manual. The AirPlay products worked fine. I could directly send music to the Apple TV, an airport station and the Oralic Aries Mini using the AirPlay protocol. But my Sonora Micro Rendu, which is a Rune ready endpoint and does work with the full version of Rune, was not seen by Rune Essentials. Nor was the Raspberry Pi with Hi-Fi Berry board running the official Rune Bridge software and the iMac the Rune Essentials software was running on. As usual you can skip the tag by going to the timecode in the top left corner. Elac was clever enough not to try to design a streamer right from scratch. Instead they sought partners in development. Verisite for the ICT part, Sonafox for the audio hardware and Rune for the software. The Discovery uses a 32-bit 4-core 1.2 GHz Cortex ARM V7 processor that seems to have 512 KB RAM and 8 gigs DDR3 memory as storage. If you are surprised by the 32 bit, there is no need for 64 bit since the only advantage is more addressable memory which isn't needed here. Linux is used as operating system and the light version of Rune Server, Rune Essential Server is the main software running. The computer part is completely close to the user which I like, there is no way to ruin the discovery. Computer nerds better buy a computer, this is a consumer electronics device like your TV or CD player and you don't hack those either. The computer part is on a separate board that is connected to the mains board using an edge connector. That mains board holds the interfacing with the audio world plus two sets of stereo DAC converters. These are the Cirrus Logic CS4350DZ set multibit Delta Sigma converters that handle up to 24 bit 192 kHz. I've said it before and I say it again here, the type of DAC chip doesn't guarantee a good sound, it's the implementation that counts. I was pleasantly surprised by the analog outputs. The designers were either rather lucky, which I don't believe, or skilled. Don't get me wrong, the Discovery doesn't sound clearly better than other products in this price range. Although it's a difficult product to compare. Still the analog outputs are voiced to sound nice with every kind of music. The main importance of good equipment is that it does sound right without nasties. This sets the specialist companies apart from the supermarket brands. The analog outputs would fit nicely in the lower range of my set too. That can't be said for the digital output that must be rated somewhat lower due to jitter that decreases the quality of the mid-highs. 
Bear in mind that the audio quality is determined by the playout device. Next to the two analog and the single digital output you can also use the future discovery components, airplay devices and if ELEC fixes, fixes the rune ready endpoint promise they made in the manual, a lot of other devices. Let's start with the elephant in the room right away. The artificial restriction of 15,000 tracks might be of no consequence for the average music listener. But it is questionable whether he will spend 1100 euros on a streamer server. He more likely will buy one or, if he's truly motivated, two plastic Bluetooth or Wi-Fi speakers and leave it with that. It is the audiophile and the music lover that will spend over a grand on a network streamer server. Even if he, it will mostly be a he, doesn't have more than 15,000 tracks, will he commit himself to a device that is limited to those 15,000 tracks, as where the 12 year old Sonos Connect already does 40,000 tracks and the Blue Sound players even double that, regardless whether he will ever need more than 15,000. For that are somewhere between 1200 and 1500 albums. But if he is willing to live with that restriction, the Discovery or DSS 101G as its official name is, has a lot to offer. Things that others don't offer to start with the Rune Essential server and the user interface. It's a light version but the only limiting factor for an audiophile apart from the number of tracks might be the lack of DSD support. Although dealers tell me that's hardly an issue with their customers. The other things I mentioned are all nice features but not really necessary. The lacking support for rune ready endpoints must be fixed in an update since it's mentioned in the manual and was also told to me by an American official of ELAC on the high end Munich show earlier this year. Having said that, the sound the discovery stream and server produces is well voiced. Having two analog and one digital output is yet another plus for those who need it. The server works very quick, especially if you realize it handles loads of metadata, the unique feature of the Rune software. I have mentioned what was left out of the Rune software, but I must stress here that the unique qualities of Rune are kept and thus offered at a very low price. The lifetime subscription of a full Rune version is 500 euros. The Discovery owner gets Rune Essential sus subscription for the lifetime of the Discovery streamer server for free. Whether the Discovery ecosystem will pick up depends fully on how soon ELEC and probably also Rune Labs will fix the Rune endpoint flaw and how they will proceed with the limited tracks. The concept is very fine and if those two points don't bother you, do yourself a favor and buy the Discovery Streamer server. Others might want to follow developments here, like I will. Expect a part 2 of this review as soon as there are more developments. A good reason to subscribe to this channel or follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. You find all info, info in the notes below this video on YouTube. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first, see the link in the top right corner. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.